to speak to you on the subject I've entitled Servanthood and as one of the neglected subjects, especially in our, our generation. You see, when civilization came, these Western guys brought their philosophies. They took away some of our, 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 our traditional concepts, which were very, very good and which were very, very uh, relevant and sustaining families. But we'll deal with that later on in the message. I just want you to know that as you get civilized, as you get westernized, don't throw away everything that our parents taught us. They taught us some morals, they taught us some stuff. Some of them now they are married for 50 years and you wonder why they are still in that union. It's because they are practicing a principle called servant would. Because without this principle of servant wood, it's very easy for any marriage to crash. It's very easy for any relationship to crash. Because servant wood, basically, you are saying, I'm putting you first before myself. It's not about me, it's about you. So in servanthood, basically, what we are saying is we want to put other people first. And you as an individual, your needs will be catered for later. And it's not an easy thing to do in life. The society has taught us, me, myself, I, 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 all the time. And there's too much selfishness in the society. Because what we are training people now is always about themselves. We are teaching people to always go for it. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. And it's all about you. And we are raising a generation of people who are selfish. And when you bring two people who are selfish into a marriage relationship, then it's not going to work. Because this person is always, is always about himself. This person is always about herself. And then there are kids involved. We don't train our kids also on this aspect of seven dudes. Our kids, they are raised by maids or house helpers. The house servant comes, picks it up, cleans it. And tomorrow you expect this individual to become a better wife, to become a better husband, when all his life he has never served anyone. So today, I'm going to give you it raw, and I'm going to speak from my heart, and I'm going to be rough on you. <laughs> Seventh wood is a biblical principle. Where we must always, at the back of our minds, be thinking about other people. Are the other people safe? Are the other people safe? That's why even in politics, we are raising people who can serve us. 
He let people into positions of leadership. They have never served. They have never been good public servants where they serve people and we let them into high positions. And when they get there because they have never practiced servanthood, you expect them to serve you. They can't serve you. They are there for their stomach. Because they don't know seven wood. Let's bring it down today. Because this is just my introduction. Of course, I want to give you my introduction. My perspective of how I, th I see things. Let's take a marriage setup, for example. There's a book called Five Love Languages. In that book, you'll find that majority of our men, they will have acts of service as their love language. Hello? And majority of women, they will have affirmation as their love language. Hello? Words of affirmation will be their love language. They want to be pampered with words. They want to be told, you look good, you are stunning, you are beautiful. That's what ladies are craving for every morning, every day. Ladies are graving for that. Men, they want the acts of service. They want to be served. Men want to be treated like kings. Men want to be treated like, like real, real, real kings in the house. When they come, they want food to be served. I mean, a traditional man like myself, I want food to be, to be given to me sometimes. It's important. Did you go kitchen And you know what this society has done? The, the, the helper in the house is going to cook. The helper in the house is going to wash your husband's clothes. The helper in the house is going to do everything, which is a love language to your husband, which is acts of service. Hello? Hello? And you expect the husband to bring words of affirmation. Words of affirmation for what? When is the, the helper who has cooked? When the, she brings food, I say thank you. When she has cleaned my, washed my clothes, I said thank you to the house help. Majority of you, you have reduced yourself to sleeping partners as wives. It's going to be rough this morning. And the worst part is, sometimes even the sleeping part is not taking place. There's starvation. People are starved. And there's no activity in the bedroom. No, we are in this marriage, Mona. No, we are okay. We are okay. The house help is doing all the stuff. And as a husband, I should be there to affirm you. You see, some of the things that touches the heart of a man is food. They say an easy way into a man's heart is through food. Through the stomach. So how's a how's a petty jomala being? You don't cook. 
Nagoro wapa wapa mboza di tota. And you expect me to, 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 to say it's nice. It's nice. It's nice. Because you, 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 you really cook. And because you really cook, when you cook, you make burnt offerings. Take it to the kids. Like I said, most of our kids, they are raised by maids. Literally. It's the maid who knows what your child likes. If they are reading problems, homework, some of them, even they help uh, students with homework. Or maybe they they go to the TV. Or they a problem. You have relegated your duties to a housewife, a house helper. And these people now, who are called house helpers, they have seen now the. The, the, the danger. They've seen now, you see, a lot of people sometimes they wonder, why can my husband sleep with a maid? I'm talking real issues. That happens in this society. That's why when uh, these ladies, they, they, they interview maids, they make sure that they don't want competition in the house. They scream and make sure, hey, this one, <laughs> can't, can't take this position. Even if the person works, but the, the only person is a bit uh, standing like the wife, they say, ah, no, this can't be my house well, helper. Because they know they are not doing their work. Let's come to the church now, Hillview Church. In this church, there are people who are spending sleepless nights to make this church what it is. Some of you, you come here for one hour, 30 minutes. You see these lights, you see the music, the singing, the preaching, and you think that's all about church. There are people out there who spend their energies, who spend their time, who spend their resources to make sure that this church is what it is. And if you have been here for more than a year and you are doing nothing, in this church, you are not in any. You are not doing. You are not helping this church in any 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 area in terms of your service, in terms of your skills, in terms of your competencies, in terms of bringing something here to make sure that this church is running. Then you need Jesus. Let me appreciate the following teams and I want us to give them a hand clap because these are the guys who are making this church run. Big up to the worship team. Every Sunday, without fail, they are here to minister to us. They are here to serve us. They don't have a lifestyle. Majority of them, they are married, but they leave their families. Every Friday night you come here, they are here to make sure that 
they practice and give you something good for a Sunday service. And for that, I want us to appreciate them. Big out to the media team, to the but they are always doing a good job. Today they didn't do a good job, but they are always here making sure that we have everything projected here, everything done here, everything running online. Big up especially to Tony. This man deserves some love. He has a wife who is sick at home, but every week, twice a week, Tony is here to make sure that this church runs. And that's a lot of sacrifice that he's bringing to this church. Big up to the production team. And big up to OJ the pastor. This man is always here. He's always here to make sure that everything is in order and he's always here to, to serve us. Lastly but not least, big up to the hospitality team. Lorne is a, a Lone air, Lone air, there are a few people who are making this church run in the hospitality team. Coming here to clean every Saturday, coming here to make sure that this place is in order. Some of you just come here, you see it clean, you think there's somebody employed to do this. These are the same people like you, who every Saturday they come here to make sure that this place of worship is clean. This place of worship is perfect for worship. Hello? We are getting into next year, 2024. And in 2024, we are anticipating growth. But I want to say to you that you cannot, as a church, experience growth if you don't have the capacity to handle the growth. Hello? There are a lot of people who come here every Sunday to visit us. And majority of them we are not able to sustain. Majority of them we are not able to keep. And the reason why we are not able to keep them is because we spend most of the time doing nothing as the partners. They leave this church, they're outside there, the visitor is like this. No one to attend to. I guess any more messaging one maybe for John 13, verse 1 to 15. Just before Passover feast, Jesus knew that the time had come to leave the world to go to the Father. Having loved his dear companions, he continued to love them right to the end. It was supper time. Jesus knew the Father had put him in complete charge of everything. That he came from God and was in, on his way back to God. So he got up from, from the supper table and set aside a rope and put on the apron. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the feet of his disciples, drying them with his apron. When he got to Simon Peter, Peter said, Master, you wash my feet. Jesus answered, you don't understand now what I'm doing, but it will be clear enough to you later. Peter persisted. You're not going to wash my feet ever. Jesus said, if I don't wash you, you, you can't be part of what I am doing. Master, Peter said, not only my feet, wash my hands, wash my head. Jesus said, if you had a bath in the morning, you only need your feet washed now, and you are clean from head to toe. 
My concern, you understand, is holiness, not hygiene. So now you are clean, but not every one of you. Then he said, do you understand what I have done to you? You address me as teacher, as master, rightly so. That is what I am. So if I am master and teacher, wash your feet. You must now wash, wash each other's feet. I have laid down a pattern for you. What I have done, done you do. I'm only pointing out to the obvious. A servant is not ranked above his master. An employee doesn't give orders to the employer. If you understand what I'm telling you, act like it and live a blessed life. Hallelujah. Where we've just read, we are meeting Jesus at the point of about to die. And he performed this, I'll say, ceremonial act of washing the disciples' feet. And Jesus was God, Jesus was king, Jesus was the high priest. But Jesus is relegating himself to a position of what? A servant. You see, in the Jewish culture, normally if you have visitors come into your house because they were wearing sandals, these guys, they will come all the way, but like I told you, because of the, 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 the environment there, they were wearing sandals, it's humid, it's hot, then they will be wearing those sandals, but how about they into your house? As they get into your house, there's a slave in the house who is employed specifically to wash people's feet before they partake in a meal. So this person will be washing the feet of the visitors, washing the feet of the visitors, and then uh, the, 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 the visitor can then come into the house. But Jesus, at this point, we see him going into a rented room because he has just rented this room. He has asked this room, this guys, prepare a room for me. So they prepared this room for Jesus to, to, to perform the Last Supper with his disciples. And the worst part is the slave who is supposed to do the washing of the feet is not part of the package. Jesus decided... I'm not going to bring the slave as part of the package. Just prepare what? A room. The room was prepared. Twelve guys. Nobody told him what he what he now. Baba huhula. Jesus, the master, sat down, took a towel, put it here, and began to wash their feet. Wash their feet. Wash their feet. Wash their feet. And as he's washing their feet. This is saying to us, if somebody who is master, somebody who is king, somebody who is God, can stoop, can stoop so low to this position of a slave. Normally even the, 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 the Jews, the slaves of the Jews, they were not even allowed to wash the feet of people. The Gentiles, these were the ones who were employed as slaves to wash the, the feet of the Jews. But Jesus is taking this lowly position to say to us, servanthood is our lifestyle. To say to us, servanthood is Christianity. To say to us, servanthood is life. And if we are not going to do it, then we are doomed as people. So the principle number one that I want you to realize is Jesus himself, he is the perfect model of servanthood. He's modeling to us servanthood. He's saying to us, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter your, 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 your titles. You can serve people. You can go down there and do the dirty job. That's why sometimes I come here on Saturdays, I see one mama cleaning this, this house, I get blessed. I realize these are people who are professionals in their offices, in their own right. 
but they can come here and take a broom and sweep. Hello? Hello? So we need to know that Jesus is the perfect example of servant dude. He has given us this principle. He has shown us this principle that we need to serve. We need to serve. We need to apply ourselves. And the second thing that I want you to realize is seven wood doesn't change who you are. It doesn't change your identity. It doesn't change your identity. I'm a teacher. I'm a pastor. Sometimes when I'm there at the at the, at the, at the, at the park, car park, saving you, some are saying, Muruti, Muruti, Murkoloi. But it doesn't change who I am. It doesn't change who I am. I am solely, it will not change who I am. So, I want to encourage you as we get into 2024, when you come back, please come renewed to know that Seven wood does not change your identity. In 2024, we want all of us to serve. In 2024, we want all of us to take part in making this church a better place of worship. Hello? We want all of us to be involved. Do something. Do something in 2024. You cannot just come, warm that chair, and go. You need to know that, yes, you are a professional. Yes, you are the boss where you are. Yes, you are, you, are, you are somebody of high position. But when we come to the house of the Lord, let's all do what? Serve. And when you serve, you serve with what? With love. You serve with what? Freely. With love. What's a force you? What's a part you? But this thing is not part and parcel of your lifestyle part and parcel of your life. I'm longing to see Christians doing this simple thing called servant wood, where we will all serve and make this place a better place. Lungut. Number three. When you are not saving, you are an armchair critic. When you are not saving, you are an armchair critic. I don't know if you have seen a soccer match. Players are in the field playing. And as they are busy playing, the, the, the energy is already drained in them. A spectator out there, Mutanzo Mastilo, Spectator, paru, in the most dilo. Eru, it's a kabo era hilea. You go to any sport, is it boxing or whatever? Most of the experts that we have, they are experts who are outside the field, who are not part of the game. Is it athletics? They'll coach Amos, this is how you must finish. <laughs> you go this way. But some of them, they have never been runners. Hello? So, it's easy to see all the faults when you are not saving. You see, I've been showing you what people do in this church every week. But if you are not doing anything and the projection is not coming right there, what in a ratata? Because you don't know what it entails. Sometimes the tornado try to mix, the sound is not coming out clearly. You get irritated. Papa like your mix. You don't know what it involves. It drains a lot of energy in people to serve. And when they serve and there are mistakes, and when you are not saving, 
It's easy to see those mistakes. So the least you can do when you are not saving, when you bring feedback, bring it nicely. Not as what? Condemnation. But bring it, bring it nicely. Bring a good feedback. It's good to get feedback from people who are not part of the system. But bring it what? Nicely. <laughs> Raut Luke Luke 22, 27. The disciples are arguing among themselves. They want to know who is the greatest among them as disciples. And they ask Jesus. They want to know Jesus, who is the greatest among us. And Jesus asked this rhetorical question to them. He says, who is greater? The one who reclines at the table or the one who serves? And he answers the question. Jesus answers the question himself. He says, the one who reclines, but I am among you as the one who serves. And I try to look at the word reclining. Reclining is defined as having a chair that has an arm rest, a neck rest. That's reclining. Kuru, you are you are at ease. So Jesus is asking them, who is greater among these two people? The one who reclines, the one who is there at the table enjoying the meal. And he says, Yes, that person might look greater because he's at the table and feasting. But Jesus is saying, no, I am here, Jesus. I am among the one who serves. Which means the one who serves is what? Is greater. And I'm appealing to you to say, all of us, all of us, let's leave our comfort zone and begin to work. Make our hands dirty to make this church work. Make our hands dirty to make our families work. Make our hands dirty to make everything around our lives work. Hello? Okay. Let's go to the church. Let's go to the church. Okay. Let's go to the church. Let's go to the church. So it's going to be key as an individual to know that you need to apply yourself in making other people better. When you serve, you are adding value. Whenever you serve, you are adding value to another person's life. When you serve your wife, when you serve your spouse, you are making that person what? better. Number four. Servant wood is a perfect preparation for leadership. Servant wood is a perfect preparation for leadership. Majority of us, we want to skip this principle of saving. And we want to be appointed to be leaders. And I will tell you, go for any great leader. You cannot see any great leader who has not been a follower. Hello? Any great leader, you will find he must... Be a follower first. He must be a servant first. Because it's in servanthood 
where you begin to have resilience spirit. It's in, in saving where you begin to develop some tenacity. The mental strength is developed in, in, in servanthood. Most of the people who aspire to become leaders but they have never been servant, they quit quite easily. Because up there is what is hot. Up there is difficult. But if you have gone through the ranks of seven wood, you develop a thick skin. You develop a thick skin and you are able to survive everything that is thrown at you. What's a mudisa? Utodisa ngoma sim. Or what's a the house help? Those people, they have a thick skin. You can chase, chase the mate today. This one is worse. The one I had at first is better. Come back. I'm in trouble. This person is good with kids. This person can do this and that. This person can do this and that. This person can do this and that. And then, wow, it's a woman who has a little bit of a remote delay. Elena, the boss of the house. I used to tell you, Bonnie, the maids, they saw a remote delay. Elena, I was a little bit of a thing. I was a little bit of a thing. I was a little bit of a thing. <laughs> so, so it's in seven wood where you will develop this thick skin for leadership. Uh, Mark 10, 35 says the master King, Jesus, he came not to be served, but to serve. So I'm basically saying to you, if Jesus himself, as king, as Lord, came not to be served, but to serve, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Lastly, Philippians 2, 1 to 11. But I'll take it from verse number 5. No, let, let me take it from verse 4. If you have gotten anything at all about following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree with each other. Love each other. Be deep-spirited. Don't push your way to the front. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be observed with getting your own advantage. Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. Verse number five. Think of yourself the way Christ Jesus thought of himself. 
He had equal status with God, but did not think it so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status, no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside the privileges of the deity and took on the status of a slave, became human. Having become human, he stayed human. It was an incredible humbling process. He didn't claim special privileges. Instead, he lived a selfless, obedient life. Obedient life. He, in the worst kind of death, and that is crucifixion. Because of that obedience, God lifted him and honored him far beyond anyone. Paul is saying, writing to the Philippians, let this mind which was in Christ Jesus be in you. Christ was God. He was equal with God. But being equal with God, he decided, I want to become a human being because I want to go and serve my people. So he lowered himself down to the level of, not angels, but to the level of what? Human beings. And he became man. And when he became man, he faced all the challenges as man, not as God. Majority of you, we think Jesus faced uh, the challenges as God. But Jesus faced all these challenges as what? As a man, as a human being, as me and you. That's why the Bible says we have a high priest who we can relate to because he has gone through some stuff that we are going through. He related with these things as what? As man, not as God. Hello? He related to these things as God. Not as God, but as man. Putting us first. Deciding, I'm going to leave my privileges. I'm going to leave my advantages in heaven. But I'm going to go down there and die, even the Bible says, the death of what? The cross, which was for thugs. This death was reserved for thugs. This death was reserved for criminals. But Jesus decided, I'm going to die this kind of death because I want to serve my people. I want to save humanity. Hello? We are getting into Christmas where we need to celebrate this life of Christ. And as we celebrate this life of Christ, I want to challenge all of you as you go all out there to your home village, please serve your people at home. Buy those combos for those who don't have. There are some people who are very, very poor, who are not privileged. Please buy something for them. Minister to them. Serve them this Christmas. There are some children by and over there at the hospital there in Marina the parents, some of them, the parents are not there. Go there and find something. As you buy a gift for your children during this Christmas, think about those children and buy a package and drop it for the children there in, Mar in Marina and spend a moment with them just to serve others. That is how we must spend our Christmas. That is how we must spend our Christmas. Go home. Spoil your parents. Spend a few minutes with your parents. Spend those few minutes and just minister to your parents. Cook for them. Make that meal for them. And let them just enjoy that meal. Hello? So, as we go out, and we are in this festive mood. Are you challenging? Are you challenging? 
le challenge in the Christmas, come on, Pengalona. Remember, you are still a child of God. Wherever you are, represent Christ well. Wherever you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.